I am continuing my reading. What I'm doing in this series is to read through the entire standard works of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. This consists of the Bible, the Book of Mormon, the Doctrine and Covenants, and the Pearl of Great Price. I am reading in a chronological order of events, not according to publication or volume, so I will be skipping around a bit as I move along. We continue in Alma. We are reading the conspiracies, rebellions, and just evil deeds of Amalekiah. He tried to take over the Nephites with a kind of a coup, failed, fled to the Lamanites, and is in the process of taking over the Lamanites. He has managed to make himself commander of the Lamanite armies. And we pick this up now, chapter 47, starting in verse 20. And it came to pass that Amalekiah marched with his armies, for he had gained his desires, to the land of Nephi, to the city of Nephi, which was the chief city. And the king came out to meet him with his guards, for he supposed that Amalekiah had fulfilled his commands, and that Amalekiah had gathered together so great an army to go against the Nephites to battle. But behold, as the king came out to meet him, Amalekiah caused that his servants should go forth to meet the king. And they went and bowed themselves before the king, as if to reverence him because of his greatness. And it came to pass that the king put forth his hand to raise them, as was the custom of the Lamanites, as a token of peace, which custom they had taken from the Nephites. And it came to pass that when he had raised the first from the ground, behold, he stabbed the king to the heart, and he fell to the earth. Now the servants of the king fled, and the servants of Amalickiah raised a cry, saying, Behold, the servants of the king have stabbed him to the heart, and he has fallen, and they are fled. Behold, come and see. And it came to pass that Amalickiah commanded that his army should march forth and see what had happened to the king. And when they had come to the spot, and found the king lying in his gore, Amalickiah pretended to be wroth, and said, Whosoever loved the king, let him go forth and pursue his servants, that they may be slain. And it came to pass that all they who loved the king, when they heard these words, came forth and pursued after the servants of the king. And when the servants of the king saw an army pursuing after them, they were frightened again and fled into the wilderness, and came over into the land of Zarahemla, and joined the people of Ammon. And the army which pursued after them returned, having pursued after them in vain, and thus Amalickiah by his fraud gained the hearts of the people. And it came to pass on the morrow he entered the city of Nephi with his armies and took possession of the city. And now it came to pass that the queen, when she had heard that the king was slain, for Amalickiah had sent an embassy to the queen informing her that the king had been slain by his servants, that he had pursued them with his army, but was, it was in vain, and they had made their escape. Therefore, when the queen had received this message, she sent unto Amalickiah, desiring him that he would spare the people of the city. And she also desired him that he should come in unto her. And she also desired him that he should bring witnesses with him to testify concerning the death of the king. And it came to pass that Amalickiah took the same servant that slew the king, and all them who were with him, and went in unto the queen unto the place where she sat. And they all testified unto her that the king was slain by his own servants. And they said also, They have fled. Does not this testify against them? And thus they satisfied the queen concerning the death of the king. And it came to pass that Amalickiah sought the favor of the queen, and took her unto him to wife. And thus by his fraud, and by the assistance of his cunning servants, he obtained the kingdom. Yea, he was acknowledged king throughout all the land, among all the people of the Lamanites who were composed of the Lamanites and the Lemuelites and the Ishmaelites, and all the dissenters of the Nephites from the reign of Nephi down to the present time. Now these dissenters, having the same instruction and the same information of the Nephites, yea, having been instructed in the same knowledge of the Lord, nevertheless it is strange to relate, not long after their dissensions, they became more hardened and impenitent, and more wild, wicked, and ferocious than the Lamanites, drinking in with the traditions of the Lamanites, giving way to indolence and all manner of lasciviousness, yea, entirely forgetting the Lord their God. So we have the murder of the king. This is all set up. They murder the king. The servants get scared that, you know, Amalekai servants just killed the king. The king's servants are scared that the Amalekai servants are going to try and kill them. Then Am Amalekai ingratiates himself into the goodwill of all the people by calling on those who love the king to avenge his death. Now the servants of the king see it. They run up. They join the people of Ammon up among the Nephites. Amalekai then sends an embassy to the city of Nephi. Apparently... He's threatening the city because the first thing the queen is asking is don't 
destroy the city. Don't destroy the people. So apparently Malachiah sent an embassy, and his embassy accused the city of being part of the conspiracy that murdered the king. And so the queen says, no, don't, just spare the people and come in, tell us what happened. Bring witnesses. Of course, they bring false witnesses, but it satisfies the queen, and after a short time, he marries the queen and becomes king. And it's all set up. Now, as they say, the Lamanites are a mix of the descendants of Laman, Lemuel, and the sons of Ishmael. But they also have among them many Nephite dissenters, and descendants of Nephite dissenters from the beginning. And I like the way that Mormon puts that. It, it's a strange thing to relate, that when somebody who knew the truth all their life dissents and leaves and turns against it, they become more evil, more hardened, more wicked than those who never knew. And we see the same thing in the modern day, really. Those who turn against the church, they're the ones that are the most hardened and the most antagonistic, the most just hateful against the church. But we will continue with Amalekiah's conspiracies, I believe, in chapter 48, so I will see you there.